Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of Top 5. Let's go, let's go. From the trailers, Top 5 looked a little bit like Birdman, the Chris Rock edition. However, upon watching the film, you can see that they are completely different in almost every way. So let's just go ahead and jump in to the positives that link this film, maybe not to Birdman, but to other great cinema. First of all, it's really funny and it is consistently entertaining from start to finish. So when you're looking at any comedy, the base criteria for it to be successful is that it makes you laugh. And Top 5 definitely accomplishes that throughout the entirety of the film. I thought the comedy style was biting, it was smart, intelligent, and it had a lot to say about society today, which is always great when you're looking at making a more elevated film past the dumb and dumbers of the world. There were also a lot of great cameos throughout the film. I think Jerry Seinfeld and Adam Sandler in particular were the best that I've seen them in a very, very, very long time. Although they only had small roles, it was just really refreshing to see them show us, hey, I'm still funny. In addition, a lot of the smaller acting roles, like his group of friends that Chris Rock meets up with when he's back home, was also hilarious. They're the ones that really get that whole top five thing rolling, and one of them in particular, I'm not sure her name, but she has that short hair, she's really tall. I thought she stole the show every single time she came on camera. But our leads are also really funny. I thought Chris Rock brought his A-game. This is the best picture I've seen from Chris Rock that he has done yet. He directed, he produced, he wrote this film, and it's way stronger than his feature-length films that he's brought to us in the past, and it's a big step up showing his progress as a filmmaker. And Rosario Dawson is always great, and she was great here once again. She was really believable. She brought so much humanity to this film, and you could definitely see her elevating the actors around her. Because while Chris Rock is a great comedian, I would argue that he's not the best actor. But Rosario helped to elevate him. And I love, love, love Gabrielle Union. I've loved her since I was very first introduced to her way back in the first Bring It On film. And here she's given a bit of an overdramatic character to play, but I thought she was funny and I just love to see her in anything. We also get bits and pieces of people like Cedric the Entertainer who bring a great bit and Whoopi Goldberg. Very funny uh, cameo in prison. Hmm. I'll let you ponder on that until you see the actual film and know what I'm talking about. But we're just given great cameos throughout the entirety of the film. And they all work, they're all funny, and I'm glad to see them in there. But as funny and sarcastic and biting as this movie turned out to be, it did have quite a bit of flaws as well. One of the flaws is that I think it went a little bit too graphic. And sometimes it went for that obvious punchline when it could have went for something more sophisticated and could have went the smarter approach. So while it was funny and intelligent overall, it still pitfalled to the lowest common denominator several times. And with that, it seemed like some of the scenes were just setups for jokes or jokes themselves. They interrupted the flow or they didn't feel like real life scenarios and it made you very aware that you were watching a comedy film instead of being immersed into the situation. And no matter how funny that those jokes or gags turned out to be, it still took you out of the actual cinematic experience because suddenly you became aware that, oh, this is a film, this is a routine, this is supposed to make me laugh. And I think that overall, it wasn't quite as self-aware as it wanted to be. It touched on social commentary, it touched on being a washed up star, but it didn't do it nearly as effective as Birdman did earlier in the year. And it never pushed the extra mile to get deeper into the psyche of Chris Rock's character or Rosario Dawson's character. We are exposed to parts of her past. They share links and they share problems and deep problems, but we never really get to delve into what those problems 
how they manifest themselves inside of the character, in their psyche, and therefore throughout their career. So I wish that they had taken the time to make this more than just a one day kind of film. Yeah, the entire plot from beginning of the film to the very end of the film all takes place in a single day. And I wish if they had just given themselves more time to work with and establish characters, they could have better developed each of the characters. And that one day thing also comes into play because some characters only meet each other in that one day and we're supposed to buy that they have this amazing strong bond and you're like, sorry you just met them. I can't quite buy into this romance. But those are quibbles. Overall, I did really enjoy Top 5. It had me laughing throughout the entire film. I was never bored, constantly entertained, and that's really all you can ask from for a comedy. The fact that it added in the extra smart humor, added in the satire, added in that social commentary was just a big plus. So definitely go out and see Top 5. It's the best comedy that I've seen in a while and definitely the smartest one to have been released in cinemas this fall. So, that has been my review for Top 5. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't be scared to go ahead and click like down below. Comment in the comment section. Let me know. Are you excited to see Top 5? Have you already seen it? What did you think? And subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest videos. I love you all so much for your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!